Hello, I'm Edward Court and welcome to the 13th video tutorial on using Woodwind Instrument Designer, software for designing woodwind musical instruments. In this video, we'll discuss designing flutes with direction holes. We'll discuss what direction holes are, although if you don't know, you probably have already turned off this video how to represent a flute uh, with direction holes, how to make a tuning file that you would use with direction holes, how to define the design constraints for the optimizers for direction holes, and then we'll walk through complete scenarios uh, for two of what I believe are the common cases. One, a square, a square end on your flute so you know what its acoustic length is, and the other that it has an irregular bore end. Um, maybe it was a piece of burl and you couldn't um, stand to take off the uh, the bark end. Maybe you have, have carved a bird in it or maybe you've just done something as simple as cut a slant on the end of the board. Um, we'll deal with those all successfully um, in this tutorial. So Let's bring up the program. And first, what's a direction hole? A direction hole is simply one or more holes in the flute body that are, are lower than the lowest uh, finger hole. Uh, they serve to, to shorten the length of the flute so that it plays your, your root, your fundamental note, um, without having to cut off the flute. Um, because we make these typically out of wood and wood is beautiful. Let's keep it long. Although I'll have to admit I rarely use direction holes. So now that we know what they are, let's bring up an instrument because as I said in this program uh, we always start from a, a base instrument and then modify it. We don't want to create an instrument from scratch. We're going to make an A flute. Uh, we've been using A flutes pretty pretty standardly in, in these tutorials. And let's make a three-quarter inch bore, and that's the, the starter that we've been using. It has six holes, and um, it's actually in tune uh, for the, the minor notes that we're going to use. And let's um, actually show that. So we'll bring up a tuning file for an A4, and let's just do the minor tuning. We've used this um, tuning file in previous tutorials. It's, it's chromatic in all of the notes, but only the minor notes have a weight of one. And so if we ask what the tuning of this flute is, we can see that it's, it's dead on. It's perfect. And if we look at the flute, um, it's a, a pretty nice looking flute. Um, holes are, are group spaced um, pretty much and um, within a single hand they're pretty much the same size. This is a nice looking flute. So actually let's bring it back up again. We're going to make a flute with direction holes and we're going to make it with two direction holes. Um, we're going to put them somewhere down on the bore, and we're going to make the bore of that flute longer than this flute is that's cut off so that this, this length makes an A4. Um, let's keep that length in mind. So it has 12.79 inches for a length without direction holes. So first we're gonna, going to add two direction holes to this flute. So if I select the bottom hole, it, click the button Add Row Below Selection. I'm going to click that twice. And now we have a place to, to put our direction holes. I'm going to do use some clever names. Um, direction hole 1 and direction hole 2. Doesn't matter what you name them. Um, 
At this point, it doesn't matter where we put them on the flute. Um, this is just a placeholder, so the program then can change that position. Let's put um, the first one about 12 inches down. And as typical in, in direction holes, we're going to put the second direction hole in the same spot. It doesn't have it's. It might be um, 90 degrees away. It might be two of them on the top, but we'll put them at the same position down the bore. You can see the program says, yep, the spacing between these two holes are zero. Uh, you will typically have some idea of what the size of your direction hole is, both aesthetically and because we're putting two holes there, we want them to mimic um, the timbre of a flute that was cut off. Um, so you either do four holes or two holes that are, are fairly substantial. I'm going to make these holes 0.35 inches in diameter. And the wall thickness is the same as uh, the rest of the wall thickness. And um, we'll come back to this for our two scenarios, but um, let's set this at 16 inches so substantially longer than the original flute. So that's all we had to do to create a flute with two direction holes. They don't look any different than regular holes because the program treats direction holes just like any other um, finger hole. So that's the first part. Um, now we need a tuning for an eight hole flute. Uh, we don't have one, so let's make one go into the tuning wizard, new tuning, and don't have to start right from scratch. I'm going to first define the scale that we're going to use. And I know that in the samples, I gave a sample of an A4 scale. It's sort of chromatic, um, as I'll show you. It's missing the A sharp on the A4 because typically a Native American flute uh, can't play that note. But other than that, it's chromatic. And I said we were going to make a a minor minor uh, flute, pentatonic minor plus the uh, the minor sixth. And so let's take out the notes that we don't want to use. So I'm going to select the notes. Um, that we do want to use. We're going to use an A4. We're going to use, um, now I'm going to hold down the, the control key um, and select the rest. We're going to use a C5 and then an A4 minor scale has no sharps so pretty much I can just select all the notes that are left without a sharp. And we'll make it just a one octave flute, so we'll stop the A5. Now I go over to these buttons and I'm going to delete the unselected notes. And there's our scale. I could save it for reuse, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use it one shot. So now I'm going to go all the way to the scale with frequencies and I'm going to load that scale I made on the frequencies page. And there it is. I could rename it, but um, I'm just going to save a tuning that I'm going to create. We said we were going to have eight holes. Well, we did have eight holes in the, in the instrument, so let's make an eight-hole tuning. And do new. It just creates one row. Now we're going to click in, this t in the um, scale table. I'm going to hit Control-A uh, to select all the the rows and this is drag and drop. Uh, I'm just going to click on one cell and dra drag it over to the first cell. The program makes then some blank fingerings for all the rest of the notes and each one of those fingerings has eight holes. Well, um, We'll, we'll fill in a couple, and then I've, I've already saved. Actually, we'll, we'll, it's not a hard thing to do. So the first note um, has all the holes selected, all the holes covered, 
except for the direction holes. We're not going to cover those. Um, unless you use your feet, you're, you typically aren't going to cover your direction holes. And you all know the fingering patterns um, that you use for those notes. It may be different for different players, uh, for different makers. Um, just enter them. And we're doing the minor sixth, which is that that fingering, the seventh. And if we're if I did this right, I've run out of notes, and I've run out of notes. So now then we would name this this file, whatever we wanted to do, put up a uh, description in it, and save it. Um, I've already done that, so I won't save it in this case. But you saw how fast it was to to make. A, uh, a tuning file for this this flute with two direction holes and you could then reuse it um, every time you wanted to make such a flute. So I'm going to save finish and I'm going to load um, that that file that tuning file and I called it um, six holes two direction holes minor tuning. Um, with a description so you can tell what's happening. A one octave minor tuning equal temperament. And so I open it and there's what that baby looks like. So we could proceed to see what the tuning is of our starter flute. Uh, shouldn't be anything good. I'm going to get rid of of this tuning for six holes. We're not going to use it anymore. And I could do that tuning and it's not horrible. It's not the right length. Uh, the direction holes are not in the right position or um, or they're not big enough, whichever way you want to set up the constraints, um, but it's not too shabby. Um, so the optimizer I'm going to use on this is uh, the grouped hole position and size. So this is an optimizer that is going to move the holes around, it's going to change their their diameter, and it's going to change the bore length um, within the constraints we set. Um, likely when you bring up this program, since I didn't put them in the samples, there will, if you click open constraints, be no file to choose from. So you'll have to have to create them. Um, if I do create default constraints, again, there is no default set in the program for an eight-hole flute. You'll get the same answer as if you click blank constraints. So let's just click blank constraints and look at it. So since it's it's from scratch, we get to, to define our hole groups. Um, the bottom two holes, so you see it's, it's eight, eight holes. It counted the number of holes in the flute that we had selected in the study. Um, bottom two holes are the direction holes. We're going to put them in the same group, although it's not absolutely necessary, um, so that uh, we just conceptually they're in the same group. We're going to put them in the same position. And then as normal for a six hole flute that you group the holes, uh, we're going to group the top three holes in a group and the bottom three holes, finger holes, in a group. And we're going to say OK. And now we have some blank constraints. It has a whole group at the top with holes 6, 5, and 4. Has a second whole group with holes 3, 2, and 1. And a third whole group with direction holes 1 and 2. And then as in um, the constraints tutorial will fill this in. Um, I know you'd really like to, to watch me type all these numbers, but let's bring, bring up one that I filled in and we'll go through the salient features. So let's close that and I will open constraints. And like I said, I saved one. We'll open it up. So here is that exact same um, constraint definition, but instead of zeros here, um, it has values filled in. So the the top, all the rows but the bottom should look familiar to you. Um, we've left the, the bore length wide open. 
um, I've constrained the the top hole position as at least a quarter of the way down down the bore um, and this is the bore length not to the direction hole but the acoustic length um, to the first note you play um, and then holes no closer than 0.8 inches um, holes with a single hand of one and a quarter inch and between hands three inches and notice for the direction holes I've put their spacing so it's spacing between them um, the upper and lower bound is zero I want them to be um, exactly the same spot down the bore the second thing I've done is um, as in, in prior uh, videos, the, the hole diameters, the finger holes, I have allowed range from 0.1 inch to 0.4 inches. The direction holes I've, I've set at 0.35 inches for the lower and the upper bound. They're a fixed size. The, the optimizer is not going to try to change um, the size of those holes. If you want them smaller or bigger, set them here and don't let it vary them. So, we have all the pieces now necessary to do, do an optimization. Now let's talk about really what we're doing. It's nice to, to have an idea. So, in this case, we're doing the first scenario with a square and flute. So, I don't know what hole it plays um, when I have all the holes closed. Uh, all the holes um, closed including the um, the direction holes but I know how long it is um, if I were doing this carefully and I do most everything carefully before I drilled any holes um, I would take this flute that's 16 inches long and I would play a note on it and then if you go back to the tutorial on on fipple factor I would determine the exact fipple fa factor in there otherwise you can use whatever you've determined is historical for your flutes for that fipple factor um, but I would I would determine the fipple factor so I'm going to create a flute that ultimate length is 16 inches I don't want want the optimizer to vary that so let's go back into our constraints that's where you set design um, limitations and I'm going to say the bore length is 16 inches minimum and the bore length is 16 inches maximum uh, it didn't didn't matter what I entered in the starter um, the the end flute is going to have that length other than that the constraints are um, just as we set fixed size for the holes uh, and let's just run the optimization okay first of all notice the final error is zero it found a perfect solution if I run this by the tuning it is a perfect solution um, no deviation on the notes let's see what that flute looks like So the, um, it's not a bad looking flute, the equally spaced holes here, equally spaced holes here, the two direction holes are, are right on top of each other, um, but the program calculates them as separate holes. Um, the position of those direction holes are 12.169. Now, a memory test what was the length of the flute before direction holes it was uh, about 12.7 direction holes will be always further north closer to the mouthpiece than as it than you if you had cut the flute off square um, because they don't have the same diameter as as the bore diameter and so it will always be a little bit north and sure enough they are well, let's spend just a couple of minutes um, making this a perfect flute, or almost perfect. Um, let's go back to the constraints. And the problem I have with this flute is the third hole is bigger than the first hole, and 
the first hole is smaller than than I like. Well, actually, it's not too bad. It's 0.34. So um, biggest problem is the third hole is is bigger than that. So let's go to the constraints because it's easy to change, especially for the small number of, of notes that we're, we're trying to optimize. And let's set hole one um, to be, again, I like it big enough that I can half hole it. Um, no smaller, well, let's just set it to, to point um, three, four inches like it, like it's, like it found. So we're making it a constant and let's set the top hole. Uh, we don't care really how small it is, but let's make it so it's no bigger than 0.34 inches. And let's get rid of this, get rid of this, and run the optimizer again on the starting flute. Again, a perfect solution. And now Hole 1 is 0.34 inches. Hole 3 is 0.324 inches. I'm willing to bet this is a pretty nice looking flute. And sure enough it is. And um, that looks, looks look like a very fine flute. And notice that the bore length of the resulting flute is just what the constraints constrained it to, 16 inches. Um, so that's how you would use um, WI designer to do direction holes where you knew what the length, the acoustic length of that flute is. Uh, what about the scenario where you don't know how long that flute is? I mean, you, you could measure it, but you don't know effectively um, where you would cut it off if it were a square flute to play the same note that it's playing. You put a bird on it. I think those those Lakota style flutes are lovely. So let's now change this so that it accommodates a flute where we don't know the length. Um, we don't have to change anything in the instrument representation. And we'll just change some values in the um, the constraint definition. But what we need to change is the tuning. Because in this case, um, before you started drilling holes, you'll play the flute <clears throat> and you'll, you'll note what, what pitch it plays with no holes, not even direction holes, played. The program does need a little bit of information to figure out where to put the direction holes. So we need to modify this tuning. So let's do that in the tuning wizard. And now we can just go directly to the last page. Let's load that um, tuning that we just made. And there it is. And what we want to do is we want to add one more note to this scale. And so I'm going to select the top, top note and I'm going to add a row above it. I'm going to call that note root, and call it anything you want. And at least for the file that you save, you can put any frequency you want. But let's say you played that flute um, and it had, um, it played 360 hertz. You would put that in and now that represented a flute with no holes. Um, so let's close all the holes. And yes, those purists out there would say, um, yes, but the closed hole correction will give you the wrong answer. And they'd be right. It, it will be off by a little bit. It'll be off by a few hundredths of an inch. But in this scenario, uh, since we don't know the length of the flute for this particular flute, we can't calculate the FIPPLE factor. We have to use our historic values for it, and it's likely to be off by more than that two hundredths or three hundredths of an inch anyway. So we've created this um, closed hole tuning, and 
um, you would save it. You might give it another name, and I've already done that, so let's not create two files. Um, let's bring that that tuning up, and I just call it um, two direction holes rooted minor tuning. And there's what it looks like. So it looks identical to the other tuning that we just used, except it has one more note at the top, which represents the flute that you would play, the note that you would play before you drilled any holes. So let's get rid of this one. Actually, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Let's, um, so. When you use this, because you've saved it, uh, in the Tuning Wizard you have to save those files. They don't get directly transferred over um, to the main program. Um, you would just bring this up if you're making an A4 flute again, and just change this number to whatever the frequency was that you that flute played before you um, drilled any holes. So now how do we use that? Let's go back to the, the constraints. In this case, um, we don't know what the bore length is. We're going to let the program figure it out. Um, we can put that back to 7 and 27 or make it a little closer. We know it's about uh, between 12 and, and 20, but no problems there. Let's leave just the constraints we had before for the holes. Um, why not? And other than that, that's all we have to change is just the top constraint. We don't know the bore length. We'll let the, the program optimize the bore length based upon that additional tuning, that additional note that we added. So we'll make sure we've selected that tuning, that starter, and we'll optimize it. We have a flute. It determined that the length of that bore was really 16.6 .6 inches. Um, the final error was again zero. It's a perfectly tuned flute. And you can see even the, the 350 hertz that it had for the root was 350 hertz finally. And no deviations. And let's look at that flute. And it's a beautiful flute. Um, it's just as nice as the other one. Um, but we had a different information set. We could put now these direction holes on a, on a bird end flute or an irregular end flute. We didn't have to know what its acoustic length is. So that's how, um, in a fairly complex scenario, two scenarios, you would use direction holes to design um, great looking, great tuning flutes um, with WI Designer. So, as usual, let's reiterate the uh, URLs you may find useful. Um, the release page for the latest release of the program. And please check that one often. We are um, doing, doing a fair amount of uh, enhancements and bug fixes. Um, the issues page where you will enter issues, or if you find something strange, go to that issues page, see if somebody else found it too, and see what our comments are, when the fixes are going to come out, if it's a fix, whether there's a workaround, and so forth. The video tutorials uh, page has the list of all the tutorials and the tutorials I intend to make. Uh, check that often, or you can subscribe to the YouTube um, videos under Woodwind Instrument Designer, and then you'll be notified when new ones come on. And if you like some written doc documentation, our wiki page has a fair amount, not anywhere near the detail that these tutorial video tutorials have, but there's the URL for that. Okay, everyone, have a good day.